Hi guys and welcome to Protopi Bootcamp. If you're totally new to Protopi and you want to get up and running fast, then this is a great place to start. Most online software courses are packed with hours and hours of in-depth training. And that's great if you have bags of time to spare learning everything. But sometimes you just want to learn just enough to get started as quickly as you can. I wanted to make a course that gives you everything you need to know in the shortest possible time. I've pared down the content in this course to give you the bare essentials and teach you what you need to know in just about two hours. By the end of this course, you'll be able to build some pretty advanced prototypes and you'll have a good idea of all the important features Protopy has and how to use them. For the time it takes to watch a movie, you could learn a powerful interaction design tool and I guarantee it will change the way you work. More than that, it will give you the freedom of design expression that you've been searching for. So if you're ready for that, let's get started. Hi there, and in this first lesson, we're going to be looking at how you can import your graphics into Protopy. Set up a new document and import those graphics. So I've just got my Protopy window open here, so I'm going to tap on New Pi. This is just going to open up a default Protopy document. So by default, it's going to give me an iPhone 11 Pro. And you can see here, um, there's a whole bunch of presets that I can choose. And what I want to draw your attention to here, because this is going to be important when we look at the importers, is that my iPhone 11 Pro document is got a resolution of at 3x. So it's got a pixel density of 3x. And that's important to remember. We've got some presets here within within Protopia for iOS, Android, desktop, and you can also set a custom size as well. But we're gonna go with iOS and we're gonna go with this 11 Pro and we're just gonna click OK. That's what we already had by default. And we now want to import our graphics. So over in the top left-hand corner here, you can see the import menu. And if I, if I just open that up, you can see we've got three supported tools. We've got Figma, Adobe XD, and Sketch. So first off, I'm going to look at Adobe XD. So Adobe, Adobe XD and Sketch, they're grouped together because they use a very, very similar importer. Figma, on the other hand, has its own plugin and we'll come, we'll come and have a look at the plugin in a little bit. But we're gonna focus on Adobe XD as our example first. So to use Adobe XD, I need to make sure that I've got Adobe XD running in the background and I've got my file open as well, the file that I want to import into. I've got this example design here ready to go. So I'm going to go back to Protopy and I'm gonna go back to my import menu and I'm gonna choose Adobe XD. Okay, so I've, I've chosen Adobe XD and I've got this, this window that's popped up. So let's just go through it. So first off, I can see all of the artboards which are in my Adobe XD file and as we know, I've only got one artboard and it's this Assets 8 artboard. If I had more than one artboard, I'd get a whole list of, of artboards here. And then next to that, we've got the import size. So as, as, I, as we saw previously, when you set up your Protopy document, you choose a preset or you might decide to, to choose a, a target device that has a different resolution, but you need to set the pixel density here. So we need to just make sure that when we import our graphics, that the pixel density we import here matches what we've set inside of our Pi file. Okay, moving lower down, we've got layers to import. We've got a couple of options here. We can just import all of the layers in the structure that they are in our file, which is, in all fairness, probably the most common way you'd, you'd want to have it set up. You do have this option. This option is actually specific to XD um, to only import layers marked for batch export. If you was looking at the sketch one, it would only, this option would allow you to import any, any layers that you've marked for export inside of Sketch. Okay, so moving down to this bottom section, you do have the ability to re-import after you just imported it, but we're gonna look at that in a little minute. Okay, so most, most of the time you wanna just leave everything at its defaults, make sure you've got the right artboard selected and we're going to tap import. Okay, so my file has come in from XD. Let's just have a look at the layers and what we've got. So you can see that the structure of the file has been respected. So everything that's been set up in XD has come in in the same order inside of Protopy. And you can see that I've got groups here and you can see that all my graphics are PNGs. So this is the first thing you don't, 
um, have SVG support through the importer for Adobe XD or Sketch, it's going to turn your graphics into PNGs when it imports them in. The only deviation from that is the text layer here. So we've got a, inside of our Adobe XD file, we had a native XD text layer. That's come in as this kind of graphic text layer. So it's got a little T in it, but it's got this image as well, which means it is text, but it's a graphical version of that. And actually, if you look over to the right here, I can actually convert this graphical text layer into real text. So if I just tap this convert to text, it's now real text, I can edit it. So you can selectively choose which text layers you want to be real text and which text layers you'd rather keep as graphics. If, for example, I decided I wanted to change something here, so let's go back to XD and maybe I wanna change the colored background. Let's just choose another color. Okay, and if I come back to Protopie and if I go to File, Import, Re-Import from Recently Used, you can see that it's, it's only imported the changes. So it's just imported the color change for the background. Everything else has, stays as is. So you do have the ability to re-import graphics from Adobe XD and Sketch. One thing to bear in mind is that it will only re-import the last thing you imported. So if you're importing lots of scenes, lots of screens, it's only gonna remember the last one. You're not gonna be able to go back and import the first one. So it's a bit of a limitation, but if you do need to use that option, then it is there. Okay, so the next way of importing I'd like to show you, and this is very specific to the fact that with the importer, I've only got these PNGs. I might want to want something more graphically resolution independent, like an SVG. I can do that. It is a bit more of a manual process. So I come over to XD and let's just grab my little smiley character here actually. And I'm just gonna right click and I'm gonna choose this option, copy SVG code. So let's select that, come back to Protopie. And I'm going to just do a regular paste here. And you can see I've got a new icon, but it's slightly different. So this is the SVG icon or the vector graphics icon. And you can see now I've got a resolution independent graphic um, directly into Protopie, which I can then use. So obviously there's a downside that it is a manual process. If you want to bring in SVGs, you have to bring them in, in, in this way manually one by one, but at least you have the ability to bring SVGs in. Okay, so there is one other way I want to show you how you can bring graphics in. So that's from the file system. So just say, for example, you're not using Sketch, Adobe XD or Figma, and you're maybe using Photoshop or Illustrator, then you can bring in graphics from the file system. So that's what this image option is here. So if I tap on this, it's gonna bring up a finder window. I've got some graphics I've already exported. So I'm just gonna grab this button SVG and just open it. And you can see now my button has come in and you can see also that it's an SVG because I exported it as an SVG. So again, this is another way that you can bring graphics into Protopie without using that special importer that you have for Adobe XD and Sketch. And it's another way you can bring SVGs in as well. Another cool thing about importing or another feature that you've got is say that you just wanna update that graphic. And again, if you're using Illustrator or, or any other software or, or you're in a situation where you just want to update the graphic without using the importer, you've got this replace option. So if I click replace, I can then choose the graphic that I want to replace it with. It will update the graphic. It will keep the size that the original graphic has been set. So if you bring in something, actually if I bring in one of these other graphics, which are obviously the wrong size, you can see that it's deformed the graphic to fit the size of the of the graphic that I've just replaced it with. Little thing to bear in mind there, but you do have, this is quite useful if you just want to update graphics and you've got lots of interactions built around them. So definitely something to bear in mind. Let's move on now to the Figma plugin because there's a, a few more features that you've got if you're a Figma user. So I'm just going to go over to Figma and here's um, a whole bunch of graphics that I've got. These are going to be the graphics that we're going to be using through this course. And Protopie have built a Figma plugin, which enables you to bring graphics from Figma into Protopie. It's just um, a regular plugin like any other Figma plugin. So I've already got it installed, but if you wanna go over to Figma and just search for Protopie, you'll, you'll find the, the plugin here. 
and then you can just access it. Let me just go back to my file. You can access it um, from your plugins menu here. So I'm just going to choose that. And you get this window that pops up. Pretty simple. You just need to select the objects that you want to export and then press the export button. So the first thing we're going to look at, we're going to, there's a few different things to, to know about this plugin. So the first thing we're going to do is just going to bring in a screen. So this asset six, so I'm going to select it inside of Figma and I'm going to press export. It's going to export the graphics and it's brought me to Protopy and it's imported my, my new screen as a brand new Protopy scene. So let's have a look. So the first thing you'll notice is that it's all, all the imports are SVGs. So one of the cool things about the Figma plugin is that it doesn't import PNGs. PNGs are gone unless you've got a PNG graphic, like an image or something, it's going to bring that in as a PNG. But if it's a vector based object, it's going to bring it in as an SVG. And as before, it's going to respect the structure, the layer hierarchy, and it's going to also bring in, if there was any text layers, it would bring in the text layers as text layers as well, like we saw. So that's that's pretty cool. So that's one thing to know about the Figma plugin. So let's go back and have a, have a little look around and explore some other features. So let's say I want to bring in this button. So I can just select an object specifically in a frame, and I can export that. Okay, so now I've got this button exported and you'll notice that it is exported into the scene that I just imported into Protopy. Because it was a specific object inside of a frame inside of Figma, it's now brought it into this scene. So it's not a whole scene, it's gonna just put it whatever the selected scene I have in, in Protopy. So that's pretty cool. And again, it's all SVG and you can see here, a text layer which has been brought in as that graphical text layer as I showed you previously. We're going to go back to Figma and we're going to bring in this switch. Okay, so I'm just going to select that and I'm going to export that in. And I don't really like this yellow color. I um, don't know what the hell I was thinking there. So I need to, I need to update this. So I'm going to go back to Figma and I'm going to find the background. I'm going to change it to this red color. Okay, so make sh making sure that I've got my, my toggle selected, I'm going to export. And you can see it's actually just updated the graphic I previously imported. So that's a cool thing. And, and a difference between the Figma plugin and say the Adobe XD plugin is that you can constantly re-import graphics as much as you like. You don't have just this one option to re-import what you just previously imported. You can update the graphics. I could do the same with this button if I go to Figma. And if I go to this button and let's find the background and maybe I'll change that to a blue color and I'm going to export that in and you can see it's just updated my button as well. Okay. So unlimited amount of re-imports, which is, which is pretty useful. Okay. What's next? So I'm going to move along here and I'm going to just import this, um, this screen here. And the first thing you'll notice, is that it's brought it in as a brand new scene because Protopy has recognized that it's a, it's at the same level, it's a brand new frame, and I want that as a brand new scene, so that's done that automatically for me. If I wanted to make a change to this this scene, so say for example, I wanted to move this, um, this dialogue into a different location, and then I re-export it, you can see it's moved inside of my Protopy file as well. So when you re-import, graphics not only does it recognize the color but it will recognize the position so basically any physical attribute that you change it's going to it's going to update okay so one final thing i'd like to show you regarding the protopy figma plugin is i just want to multi multi select so i want to bring in more than one screen at the same time so I'm, i can just shift select a bunch of scenes a bunch of frames inside of my figma file and then just hit export. Obviously taking a little bit longer, it's got more graphics to export in. And boom, it's brought in my three scenes inside of Protopy. So most of my three frames have come in as, as three scenes and that's pretty, that's pretty useful. Again, that's something you can't do with the other importers. Okay, so that about wraps up how all the different ways that you can import graphics into Protopia for all the different graphics tools that you might be using. 
So hopefully this has been really useful for you and I'll see you in the next lesson.